Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. I am super excited about today's deck because it's another creature coming soon in the Zendikar Rising set. I love spoiler season so much, I love new legendary creatures, I love building new cutting edge decks, it's just so much fun for me. Today's deck is going to be on Phyleth World Sculptor. It's a legendary creature elemental that costs 4 red and a green, and when it enters a battlefield we create a 0-1 green plant creature token for each basic land we control, and it has a landfall ability that says whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control we put 4 plus 1 plus encounters on target plant we control. So this card looks very similar to Avenger of Zendikar. It basically is Avenger of Zendikar. The only difference is, is cost one less mana. Avenger of Zendikar counts all of our lands, non-basic and basic alike. And Avenger of Zendikar's landfall ability puts a plus one plus encounter on all of our plants as opposed to putting four on one. So I think that Phyleth presents a super interesting build. Instead of a lot of tokens, you're going to want to make fewer tokens, but you're going to make those plant tokens a lot bigger than Avenger of Zendikar would. Now this deck, it was a little bit challenging for me because this is totally outside of my comfort zone. I tend to build more spells matters deck that don't care too much about the combat step and in a lot of games, I forget that the combat step is even there. So this was a really fun challenge to kind of step outside of my comfort zone and build a deck that I maybe wouldn't have otherwise played. And let me tell you, I had a lot of fun building it and I think this deck has a lot of potential and I think it's really fun. So this deck is focusing on lands and specifically basic lands. You'll look down, if you look at the deck list before watching this video you'll notice that we are playing only basics 20 mountains 20 forests i think that that's the best way to abuse phyleth's enter the battlefield trigger we don't want any awkward board states where we're only making a couple of plants because we got all of our non-basic land so i i really wanted to just stick with the basic land package and we're going to be abusing phyleth's landfall ability and other landfall abilities by putting a bunch of lands into play with a bunch of different effects and then we're going to be swinging in with a bunch of big creatures big plant tokens and We've got a couple other tricks up our sleeves too. So let's dive right into our insane ramp package. So starting off with the creatures that ramp us, we've got Wood Elves, Farhaven Elf, Yavi Maya Druid, Sekira Tribelder, and Springbloom Druid. Basically all of these creatures can put lands directly into play from us with Springbloom Druid being able to put two lands into play but at the cost of having to sacrifice one but essentially all these creatures do is they put extra lands into play which is super useful when we have creatures that care about lands entering the battlefield like our commander. All right when it comes to non-creature ramp we've got Rampant Growth, Farseek, and Nature's Lore each of which costs two mana and can pull a basic land out of our library and put it directly into play. Then we've got Cultivate and Kadama's Reach, which for three mana can get two basic lands from our library, putting one into play and one into our hand. Then we have Sky Shroud Claim and Explosive Vegetation, which can get us two lands and put them directly into play. And then we have Haro, which is super cool because we can cast this spell at instant speed. It's like Spring Bloom Druid, where we have to sacrifice a land, but we can find two lands, put them into play untapped. So that's super useful. We can use those lands immediately. We then have Boundless Realms, which is a massive spell, seven mana. We get to search our library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of lands we control, and put them into play tap. So this can get us a ton of lands from our deck and put them directly into play. That's why the deck is running an insane amount of lands. Next up, we have a super interesting card called Collective Voyage. For one green mana in Sorcery, it has the ability Join Forces, which means starting with us, each player may pay any amount of mana. Each player searches his or her library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the total amount of mana paid this way, puts them onto the battlefield tap, and then shuffles his or her library. So yes, this is going to help our opponents put lands into play, but with the way our deck is built, we're going to be able to take the most advantage out of the lands. That's all of our ramp. We've got some other synergies though when it comes to lands matter and putting extra lands into play. So we've got Azusa Lost But Seeking, which is a super powerful creature and thank goodness she got reprinted. She lets us play two additional lands on each of our turns. And then we have Rada, Heart of Keld, and she doesn't necessarily put more lands into play than like a ramp spell, but she does let us play lands from the top of our libraries, which is super useful. And then she has a really powerful activated ability for four red and a green. She gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of lands we control. So this is also a really good finisher. We have lots of ways in the deck of giving her and other creatures trample, so she's super powerful. 
We then have Mina and Den Wildborn, and they let us play an additional land on each of our turns, and we can pay a red and a green to return a land we control to our hands to give target creature trample until end of turn, which returning a land to our hand might seem like a downside in a lot of decks, but with our landfall triggers, it's actually really nice to have lands back into our hand, especially because we're going to be pulling a lot of lands out of our deck and putting them into play. And then we have Lotus Cobra, which again, thank goodness that this card got reprinted. Hopefully it, the price continues to soften as Zendikar Rising hits the market and it has a super powerful landfall ability whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control we can add one mana of any color to our mana pool so with any of our ramp spells or just playing our land for turn we can get that mana back that we can use to cast more spells all right next up we have dryad green seeker which is a nice little dryad we can tap it to look at the top card of our library if it's a land we can put it into our hand otherwise we just kind of leave it on top so this is nice to kind of get lands off the top of our library so we can keep drawing more cards that are useful for us and finally, we have Corsair of Crufix, which again, this technically isn't ramping us because we are just using our land for turn, but we can play the top card of our library and we play with it revealed. And whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we gain a life. So this is a super nice card in the deck, can gain us some life over the game and maybe keep us alive late game, who knows? Really powerful card. Next up on the land synergy cards, we have Living Twister, which has two activated abilities. One in a red, we can discard a land card and it deals two damage to any target, which can be super good for sweeping away small important creatures our opponents have, or maybe dealing a bunch of damage to our opponent's face. And then we can pay one green mana to return a tap land you control to its owner's hand. Super nice, only one green mana. We can activate it at instant speed. I really like this card. We then have Undergrowth Champion, which is a really cool card. If damage would be dealt to Undergrowth Champion, while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, we get to prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus one counter from it. And whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it. So with how many lands we're putting into play, this thing is going to get huge and it's super difficult to deal with. We then have Tireless Tracker, which whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we get to investigate, which that means we make a clue token, which we can pay to, sacrifice it, and draw a card. And whenever we sacrifice a clue, we put a plus one plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. So that gives us some good card advantage and a pretty good creature to attack and block with. Then we have Turn Timber Basilisk, which when I first saw this, I didn't think very much of it until I actually read it a little closer. So it has Death Touch and Landfall. So whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we can have target creature block Turn Timber Basilisk this turn if able. So this is actually a really good removal spell. We can play a land and make one of our opponent's best creatures have to block the turn timber basilisk. So that's a really powerful card. And then we have Zendikar's Royal, which is super flavorful for the deck. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we create a 2-2 green elemental creature token. So with how many lands we're playing, it is not unlikely for us to be making four, maybe even five elementals in one turn. All right, now let's go over the cards that help us refill our hand after we've spent all of these cards ramping. So we've got Beast Whisper and Guardian Project. Each trigger, when we cast a creature spell, they let us draw a card, which is very good with how many creatures we're playing. And then we have Shamanic Revelation, which is going to draw us a card for each creature we control. So if we cast our commander, make a bunch of plant tokens, this is going to give us a ridiculous amount of cards. And then we have Life's Legacy, which is super efficiently costed at one in a green. As an additional cost, we have to sacrifice a creature, but we draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power. So this is really cool. After we've played our commander and we've played maybe a land or two, we're going to have an 8-8 plant token that we're going to be able to draw eight cards off of with Life's Legacy. Also, we've got some other ways in the deck of making some really big creatures. So, so Life's Legacy is super good. We then have Return of the Wild Speaker, which at instant speed lets us draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures we control, or non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. So I have this in here as a card draw spell because it is a very good card draw spell but it could also be a really good overrun or a uh, mass pump effect for our creatures because all of our plants are obviously non-humans and giving them 3-3 until end of turn is really powerful. And finally, we have Primal Command, which I've put in the card draw area because it has a really powerful tutor effect, but it's got a bunch of different abilities. So we can choose two of the following. Target player gains seven life, put target non-creature permanent on top of its owner's library, target player shuffles his or her graveyard into his or her library, or search your library for a creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So we've got some really key creatures in the deck that we really want to see to make the deck work like our beast whisperer or some of the other finishers that i'm going to be going over in a minute so being able to tutor for them and put them directly into our hand and have another small effect on the side makes us a really good card Next up, let's go over the cards that I've kind of categorized as the win cons. These are creatures that we're going to be using to beat our opponent's face in and are really good at it. So let's start off with Multani Yavimaya's Avatar. 
Multani is a reaching, trampling elemental avatar that gets plus one, plus one for each land we control and each land in our graveyard. And we can pay one into green to return two lands we control to their owner's hand to return Multani from our graveyard to our hand. So this is a recurring big beater that can get lands back into our hand that we can play again to trigger our landfall abilities. And we can recur Multani and cast it again to trigger our guardian project or a beast whisperer. And having a creature that gets plus one, plus one for each land we control is awesome. Plus it has reach and trample. I mean, this is a really good card in the deck and pair this up with Chandra's Ignition, which is also in the deck, this could take out our opponents in one hit. We then have Rampaging Bayloths, which are awesome. They have a landfall trigger. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we can create a 4-4 green beast creature token. This is going to this is going to give us a big army of big beasties that we can swing in and take our opponents out with. We then have Crash of Rhino Beetles, which have Trample, and they get plus 10, plus 10, as long as we control 10 or more lands. We can sneeze and control 10 or more lands. I mean, it is so easy for this deck to have 10 or more lands. It's not impossible for us to get 10 or more lands when this comes into play on turn 5, so this is a very powerful card. We then have Olvenwald Hydra, which its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands we control. And when it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a land card and put it into play. So this ramps us and becomes a really big creature that we can use to hit our opponents with or hit with Chandra's Ignition. Next up, we have Liege of the Tangle, which is a super big elemental with Trample. It's an 8-8. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we can choose any number of our lands and we get to put an Awakening counter on each of them. Each of those lands is an 8-8 green elemental creature token for as long as they have an Awakening counter on it and they're still lands. So with this out, we can turn all of our lands into 8-8s. That is ridiculous. Along that same vein of thought of turning our lands into creatures, we have two other spells that can do that with Rude Awakening. We get to choose one of the two. We can untap all lands we control, or until end of turn, all of our lands become 2-2 two -two creatures that are still lands. Or if we pay 8 mana with the Entwine cost, we can use both of those abilities. And then Sylvan Awakening, until our next turn, all of our lands become 2-2 two -two elemental creature tokens with Reach, Indestructible, and Haste, and they're still lands. So we don't really even need to worry about there being a board wipe because our lands are indestructible. Another really powerful win con in the deck is our Dragon Master Outcast, a one red mana human shaman that at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control six or more lands, we get to make a 5-5 five five red dragon creature token with flying. Getting a 5-5 five five dragon with flying every turn is super powerful and this will help us fly over our opponent's defenses and take them out. And then next up we have Orin Reef Hydra, which is which is a trampling hydra with landfall and whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, it gets a plus one plus one counter. And if that land was a force, we get to put two plus one plus one counters on Orin Reef Hydra instead so this can get very big very fast all right i had to put avenger of zendikar in the deck i would have felt really bad if i didn't it is a little bit pricey but i think it belongs in the deck so i kind of already explained what avenger of zendikar does in the intro to the video but when it enters the battlefield we're going to make a green plant token for each land we control and then landfall we get to put a plus one plus one counter on each plant so this has a lot of synergy with our commander because our commander makes plants and this will put plus one plus one counters on all the plants that we have so this is super powerful all right next up the only artifact in the deck that we're playing is the black Blackblade Reforged. It's a two mana equipment that costs three to equip to a legendary or seven to equip and the equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each land we control. We are playing a bunch of legendary creatures in the deck besides our commander so there are other targets that we can put this on and being able to give it a plus one plus one counter for each land we control is disgustingly strong especially with some other ways of giving our creatures some type of evasion be it trample or menace. This is going to end games pretty quickly. And then next up we have Gruul War Chant, which is a super cool enchantment. Attacking creatures we control get plus one, plus O, oh, and have Menace. So Menace makes it so they can only be blocked by two or more creatures. So this makes all of our creatures much more difficult to block and they get a little bit stronger. And since our commander is making us a ton of small tokens, that plus one, plus O oh really starts to add up. And then finally for the win cons, we've got Overwhelming Stampede, which says until end of turn, creatures you control get Trample and plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So imagine we've played our commander and equipped it with a Black Blade Reforged in one turn and, you know, he's absolutely massive. And the next turn we play the Overwhelming Stampede. All of those plants that we just played the turn before are going to be disgustingly huge and this will definitely end the game. Next up, let's go over the interaction and just the last few remaining spells in the deck. So we've got Reclamation Sage and Destructive Revelry, which can deal with pesky enchantments that our opponents have. Chaos Warp and Beast Within can deal with basically any permanent our opponents have. And Decimate is a super interesting card. It destroys target artifact, target creature, target enchantment, and target land. A note for this spell, 
There has to be a legal target for each of those targets for the spell to resolve. If there isn't an enchantment on the field, you actually can't cast this spell. And then we have Ground Assault, which is going to deal damage to target creature equal to the number of lands we control. This is really cool because our deck is super suited to take advantage of this and deal a ton of damage to a big creature. And then for Board Sweepers, we have Blast from the Sack that costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it's going to do 13 damage to each creature. And then we have Chain Reaction, which deals X damage to each creature, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Battlefield. And then we've got some ways to recur cards from our graveyard back to our hand with regrowth that puts any card from our graveyard into our hand and eternal witness which when it enters a battlefield we can return any card from our graveyard to our hand. And then finally we have a super cool combat trick card with teamer battle rage. At instant speed target creature gets double strike until end of turn and it has the ferocious ability which means that if we control a creature with power 4 or greater that creature also gets trample until end of turn. If we've suited up a creature with the black blade reforts or even our commander this could essentially one shot an opponent. All right, and finally, let's go over the lands. I mentioned it in the introduction to the video. We are playing only basics, and we're playing a lot of lands at 40. So we're playing 20 basic forests and 20 basic mountains. When I was building the deck, I thought that it was kind of a meme to do that, like just kind of a joke. But then the more I thought about it, the more I really wanted the deck to have a lot of lands, and I wanted them all to be basic. So to prevent a really weird situation of our commander not giving us as many plant tokens as we would want or would need. So I did kind of start out as a meme, but the more I thought about it, the more I actually thought it was a, a pretty good idea. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my deck for Phyleth World Sculptor. I had a ton of fun building the deck and I think it's going to be a blast to play. And I hope you guys are enjoying the Zendikar spoiler season as much as we are. Thank you to all of our subscribers and our patrons. You guys rock. You, we really couldn't do this without you guys and we really appreciate your support. Just a, a couple of quick reminders here in the close. If you'd like to support our channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash command valley. It does support us directly. You get exclusive content, access to our discord, merch, and lots of other perks. And then another quick reminder to go through that link in the description below to game grid that helps out the channel a lot and with zendikar rising coming out just wanted to give an extra quick reminder to maybe pick up a booster box from game grid or a bunch of their singles it helps out the store and it helps us out a lot and they've got really good shipping and they're an awesome store and then another reminder that we are live streaming every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and you can join us for some Brawl on Arena. And then for our social media, our handle is P one and you can like us on Facebook and the links for all of that is in the description below. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have an amazing week and stay safe out there.